another one. We gotta talk about it after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that that corner sh <laughs> What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's almost college football related, sports related. We have a good time. Today, I want to talk about four-star defensive end Landon Jackson choosing to commit to LSU. Felt like the kid from Texarkana was going to be a Texas A&M lean, even wanting to make his commitment public heading into his senior season, but he decided to pull the trigger the day after LSU tied the record for most draft picks by one team in the seven round draft era that goes back to 1994 with 14 tied with Ohio State, of course. He is the sixth commit in the 2021 class for Ed Orgeron's LSU Tigers and joins JoJo Earl as their second commit over the weekend, along with Rajon Davis, who is a five star, of course. Landon Jackson is just outside the top 100 in the 247 sports composite and just inside the top 100. And the two top two four seven, he's outstanding. Six foot six, two hundred forty five pounds. He, like many of the high school talent, has been trying his best to keep in shape, even in this age of quarantine. But you can't teach that kind of size. You can't teach that kind of speed. And he's yet another tremendous edge rusher coming out of this twenty twenty one class. And that's really where I think this class is so deep. He's getting comparisons to Carl Nassib. Those of you that saw Hard Knocks with Cleveland Browns, the dude that was giving everybody the economics and financial advice, that's Carl Nassib. He's got that same sort of length. He's got that same sort of size. I expect him to really stand tall in that, that five technique as Bo Pelini is going to a 4-3. This would have been a Kayvon Chasen type of player had they stuck with the 3-4 that Dave Aranda ran, but they are flipping back to the 4-3. He joins what I think is going to be a really excellent class for LSU. They have Garrett Newsmeyer as an LSU lean. We all, for the most part, think that he's going to end up there at LSU. Of course, his father, Doug Newsmeyer, was an offensive analyst for LSU and is the quarterback's coach for my Dallas Cowboys, who picked up C.D. Lamb, Reggie Robinson, Bradley Anai, quarterback from James Madison, Tyler Beattis out of Wisconsin, and of course, Trayvon Diggs out of Alabama. Now, LSU has just been ridiculous on the recruiting trail basically since Ed Orgeron took over, but really going all the way back to when Nick Saban decided that Louisiana State University was the kind of place for which he could build a foundation, of course, taking them to a national championship before going, trying his hand at Miami with the Dolphins, coming back 2007, Alabama. Now, this also just follows suit with what we've seen from, the, from LSU and from the SEC because you are seeing what many recruits have seen, which is 40 of the first round selections came from the SEC. And since 2007, the SEC has been responsible for the most NFL draft picks. That's basically since Nick Saban returned to college football, the SEC has put out more NFL draft talent than any other league in this country. And it's becoming an embarrassment of riches for them, but certainly a win that they needed because earlier today, Dylan Brooks decided that he was going to commit to Tennessee. This is the kind of kid that Nick Saban usually wins in the state of Alabama, coming out of Roanoke, where he plays at Hanley. Another six foot five, 225 pound edge dude that, well, I thought was going to end up at either LSU or Auburn and then upset everybody with going with Jeremy Pruitt and Tennessee, where there's some Alabama staff members. Of course, Jeremy Pruitt was a defense coordinator for Nick Saban and director of player personnel at one point for Nick Saban at Alabama. Ed Orgeron is really the only guy in the SEC that does not have direct ties to Nick Saban, but he does get there in six degrees of separation because he worked for Lane Kiffin. Lane Kiffin is the head coach at Ole Miss. And of course, Lane Kiffin was offensive coordinator for Nick Saban at Alabama before taking over the job at Florida Atlantic. And then add to this, on the other side of the ball, he added Scott Linehan, another guy that used to work with the Dallas Cowboys. I was actually really glad to see him go because I'm not that high on Scott Linehan. I wish you well, LSU Tiger fans. I just don't think it's going to work well. But he's the passing game coordinator, right? And as many LSU fans would tell me and tell you, Steve Insminger 
is the guy calling the plays, and that better be so. Because with 14 guys getting drafted and then guys like Thad Moss being signed as an undrafted free agent, they're going to be retooled at almost every position except, of course, Jamar Chase at wide receiver, Terrace Marshall at wide receiver. But Eric Gilbert was voted by many coaches this year as the most likely candidate to be a breakout star as a true freshman. Getting the most votes of anybody that was polled according to ESPN that did an anonymous polling of this incoming class of uh, true freshmen that includes the uh, the likes of Brian Brzee and Bryce Young and on it goes. But Eric Gilbert is also the highest rated tight end of all time coming out of the 247 sports composite. Of course, the highest rated in the last three years, 6'5", 253 pounds. I expect him to be a go-to weapon for them. Of course, on the other side of the ball, they're retooling. Jacoby Stevens and, uh, excuse me, Derek Stingley Jr. are going to have to pick up the slack for Grant Delpit. They're going to have an entirely new middle of the defense with at linebacker with Patrick Queen and Jacob Phillips, both going into the NFL. Also, really interesting note here, they're going to get the kiddo from North Dakota State as a grad transfer that I expect to start at middle linebacker or will. We'll see what Jabril Cox can add to this defense, but It would not surprise me to find out that he is the guy that they're leaning on, along with Marcel Brooks, who I think is going to have to figure out how to play Will Linebacker. He might be the odd top-end recruit that finds a hard time just fitting in because of the way that he's been moved around. He could project his safety in one scheme. He projects as an edge guy in another scheme. He projects as a Will Linebacker in this scheme, or Sam, depending on how Bo Bellini wants to roll him out there. I hope that Marcel Brooks does not suffer the fate of a Caleb Kelly. I'm not talking about the injury. I'm just talking about figuring out where you fit because I've always thought that a five-star kid like Caleb Kelly is really a strong safety that they have forced into the role of Sam linebacker and now Will linebacker at Oklahoma, and he needs to get it all together this year. Marcel Brooks is the same sort of athlete. You just need to find a place to slot him in to make it work for him. But getting back to Landon Jackson, another really great commit for Ed Orgeron. Sent out the hold that Tiger as soon as Jackson made it official. But earlier in the day, A&M fans were really starting to freak out because, of course, the Brian Peroni and others that cover A&M were saying, look, they're very high on him, and they're trying to get these kids in the boat earlier with only three commits at A&M, but it wasn't looking good with the kiddo coming out of Texarkana, and that was a win I think Jimbo Fisher really wanted to have because they spent a lot of last year just backloading the 2020 class, and that's not what you want to do if you're going to try to compete for championships and you're going to try to front load it with as many high value four stars, five stars as you can, and then have your pick and choosing of who is left because we know this to be true. If you're going to compete for championships, especially in the SEC, you need to have a top 10 recruiting class. Tennessee was able to do that last year, as was AM, as was Auburn, and that's one of the reasons they're always going to be there. But in the SEC West, You are going to face LSU. You are going to face Alabama. You are going to face Auburn. And then Sam Pittman at Arkansas is going to have an opportunity to really get that thing turning over and going. I feel good about his staff with Kendall Bryles as his offensive coordinator, Barry Odom as his defensive coordinator, and then Mike Leach at Mississippi State. Mississippi State put a bunch of kids into the NFL draft and had no business doing so. There are folks that are comparing Tommy Stevens to Taysom Hill, but then there are folks that are comparing Jalen Hurts to Taysom Hill. All in all, good day for LSU, and you expected them to reap the benefits of seeing so many LSU Tigers get their names called in this NFL draft, along with many others to come. We'll see what they're up for. I'm not not high on them to even make it back to the SEC championship game. I think they're going to have a hard time winning more than eight games this year just because of the sheer amount of turnover and the sheer amount of well, new faces that they're going to have to field out there. I mean, among the 130 FBS teams, they ranked fourth from the bottom in returning production, but they're very high on Miles Brennan. Of course, they're very high on Chris Curry and John Emery and Ty Davis Price. Here's hoping that they outkick their expectations, but for Landon Jackson certainly helps you in the year coming back where you will certainly have a number of players that are returning after getting this year of college football under their belt. All right. That's it for me. There's...